In this video, we're going to talk about how to come up with a campaign slogan. This is the definition of a good one. A short set of words, like the title on a book, that compels people to pick up that book because they want to know more. Curiosity, a slogan that creates curiosity that makes a voter want to know more about you. Some compelling thing that you're going to do for the electorate something you are saying you're going to do that no one else is talking about. Something that makes them want to know more about you and what you stand for. I'm going to tell you how to do it. What we're going to cover in this video is first understanding the purpose of a slogan and what you hope to accomplish with it. The factors to consider as you develop your campaign slogan, and that's going to include the political environment, the agenda that you stand for, perhaps a particular slice, a demographic slice of the electorate, or perhaps even your unique selling proposition. We're going to cover all of that. What is a slogan? And what purpose does it serve? You know, every day we are inundated with messages. It says, buy me, look at me, what about me? Hey, come over here, buy this, do this. This will change your life. And you know what we do after a period of time? We just block it all out, unconsciously. We just filter this stuff out until we happen to see something. And it's on Facebook or Twitter or perhaps even a political campaign. We see a slogan that actually makes us curious. We want to know more. We say, what, what is this about? Or we see something that helps us solve a problem. Or we see something that we think might make us feel better. And then click. We stop to look and to investigate. That is what you want your campaign slogan to do. Curiosity mystique, whatever those words are, should interest the voter in you, your agenda, or your platform. There are other considerations to developing your campaign slogan, and I'm going to talk about several of them here. One is that the political environment that you're running in. If we're in one of those election years when one particular issue is dominating all others, like 1992 when nobody wanted to talk in about anything except how to get the economy on the right track, and your slogan has nothing to do with how you're going to fix this problem or solve it or make it better, you are going to be irrelevant. So the first consideration of your slogan and the question to ask yourself is, is there some dominant issue in the dialogue this year that compels me to somehow address an issue that is overwhelming the electorate? Second thing to consider is, what about your agenda? Is it unique? Is there something compelling that you are offering voters they believe would improve their quality of life or their standard of living or bring some degree of business activity and wealth to a rundown area? Are you giving them hope? And sometimes your agenda and how you position yourself on particular issues, what you advocate doing, is one of those things that sets you apart. And here's an example. Many years ago, I was working for a very young man, he was only 29, running for mayor of a city, and the party he belonged to was a very small part of the voter registration rolls. He was running in a city where another party completely dominated things, and he was running against an unpopular incumbent who had run into hard times. Well, there was a sense among voters in the city that the city was headed in the wrong direction. And his slogan became simply this, cleaner parks, safer streets, more playgrounds. Well, why did that message resonate? Because voters thought the parks were filthy, they thought the playgrounds were rusty and overrun, they thought the streets were filthy. And he was offering to them something they didn't have that they thought were, were entitled to, and they immediately latched on to him when they saw the slogan saying, who is this guy, because that's what I want. That slogan worked like magic. He won an election, the youngest mayor ever elected in that city. Another factor to consider as you're developing your slogan is the demographics of your jurisdiction. Is there a particular 
demographic profile of a set of voters who feel like they need someone who's going to pay more attention to them than the other candidate you may be running against. Here's an example. This was a race in New York City and someone was running for Congress in a neighborhood that was going through very rapid demographic change. Caucasians had dominated the politics in this particular congressional district for a long, long time, but it had also become a magnet for Asian communities and they were moving in in droves and this smart candidate paid attention to the demographic trends. He was Asian and his slogan became, our time, our turn, and it had his picture on it. And his people knew exactly what that meant. And it hit a resonating chord with them. They turned out in mass and there was a sea change in the congressional representation of that district. That is a good example of what I mean by targeting the piece of the demographic universe of your voting universe to put yourself on the map with a memorable slogan. I'm going to mention another one here that sometimes comes into play, and that's what I call your unique selling proposition. It can be very useful, and I'll give one example of one place where that was used. It was a seven candidate field in a very hotly contested primary in a race for Congress in New York's Hudson Valley. And they were all really well qualified people. And they all had great resumes. Six of them were men and there was one female that no one took seriously because she hadn't been part of the political apparatus. Well, I, of course, knew I was working for the female. She found me and we started working together. And I, of course, immediately noticed one of her unique selling propositions is she's the only female in the race. Well, good, but I'm not going to say and give her a slogan, vote for the woman, which is really pretty of insulting to the voters. Now, there wasn't much difference in their ideological beliefs. They were all fairly conservative candidates came up with this. If you think all the candidates for Congress sound the same, you haven't heard Sue Kelly. And I put a picture on it. And we use that in every piece of literature. Now, we also found other things that were unique about her as we did our opposition research. She was the only one who actually lived in the district. She was the only one who didn't move to the district to run for Congress. She was the only one who favored a certain policy option on capital gains tax. Anyway, what was he put it together is it is a slogan perhaps best remembered of any campaign to this day in the Hudson Valley because it was stressing her unique selling proposition in a race she didn't have to get 50%. All she needed was to get more votes than the person who placed second, and she did. If you are interested in even more examples of different slogans and how they have been used in political campaigns, click the link below and watch that video. There are hundreds of them on that video.